Right, I'm just necropsying the second bird um, that's had its wings clipped, second lorikeet that's had its wings clipped today. It's a mature bird um, by its beak colour, it's been dead for a while by its sunken eyes, nose, nostrils, the beak looks okay, mouth looks okay. And this is pretty gross, but this is the way I do things if I'm doing them quickly. I'll get to there in a moment, I'll come back. And I'm just cutting open the abdomen. And I've noted that the air sac membranes are just a little bit cloudy. The bird's working on a, a carcass that has been frozen and thawed. Uh, that makes interpretation of things a lot harder. Going up to the bird's uh, crop in here, just cutting into the crop very quickly. I'm not intending to take specimens from the bird, but uh, the lining of the crop is pretty normal for a frozen birdie. The windpipe. Doesn't have any obvious uh, gross lesions in it. The heart is here. Voice box is just above the heart. Syrinx is just in there. It's where they make their noise and they can control the left side of the voice box has a different set of controls to the right side so they can be making quite a lot of sounds that are way outside our hearing range when they're communicating with each other. Lungs are um, look a little bit congested but not obviously pneumonia. That's lung tissue there, lung tissue here, liver holding on to some air sac membranes just a little bit thickened or cloudy. Coming down the side here, have a look at the bird's stomach, which is um, the glandular stomach or proventriculus is there. The ventriculus is here, and in this case the ventriculus is normal size, not impacted, not, not, uh, we've got the spleen just here, which is a very a small, normal spleen. Well, can't say it's normal, but it's normal size. The intestines have dark contents, they normally have pale contents for a lorikeet. Um, but the bird is in a state of decomposition. But we'll need to look at the dark intestines because there's something probably been causing bleeding there but it's not the typical uh, gangrenous necrotic enteritis that we, see, that we have been seeing. However, very dark intestines and going down here it appears that we've got a, a male bird with very very small testes and a slightly swollen adrenal glands so testes there and there adrenal glands immediately in front of them uh, lots of uh, urine, urates in the ureter coming down from the kidneys, that's that white strand there. And again, intestinal contents, very dark. And uh, it looks like this bird might have been bleeding inside the, in, in the intestine, so we will take a smear or two from there. Cloacal region with a mixture of white urates or creamy white urates and the dark intestinal contents in it. That's inside the vent. Okay, so I think we need to get a couple of samples of the uh, what's going on there. We might turn off that tap after that. Alright, I 
have a look at that a little bit later. And we'll just open this bird's gizzard. So the gizzard here, whereas the, uh, the previous bird's gizzard was distended with fibre and black mass and stuff like that. Like that, that came out of the, the previous bird's gizzard, if you remember, if you saw it. This bird's gizzard going up to the stomach. I presume these two birds are from the same aviary. That's where the bleeding appears to have occurred in the gizzard area, or the stomach area here. Uh, we've got very dark stomach contents, so I suspect this is where the it's been hemorrhaging from the stomach area. I think so. We'll make a smear of that as well. We'll put some of that under the microscope. And See what we find. Okay, we still don't know the cause of death, but we're getting some clues. All right, so if this was a fresh carcass, I'd be doing a lot more work on this area here. But something has been causing, appears to have caused hemorrhage from the from the stomach. So we'll be looking to find out what's going on there. All right, I'll put that carcass aside. Uh, we'll come to 